Yes, the Tano Dragon has finally arrived. I ordered this on the date you see right there, the 25th of January, 2013. And the box is finally here. I think we should unbox this. This is a new old stock dream right here. I think we should uh, definitely take the time. Here we have it. Let's unbox this thing. Wow, they use staples here. They didn't screw around at all. All right, let's do it the old fashioned way. Let's just pull it open. Come here. <laughs> my invoice here. Cool. There you go, Tano Dragon. $45 plus 30 shipping because uh, I live in Pennsylvania. So that cost me $75 in total. So overall, a new old stock machine for under $100. That's from the 1980s. I'd say that's a good deal. At least in my opinion, it is. I think it'd be well over 100. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Oh yeah! That is beautiful. And here's the box itself. Which There we have the Tano Dragon box itself. All right, look at that. Take a look at the spec label here. So you get a 6809 processor, 64K of RAM, so it's basically a Dragon, what a Dragon 64 would have been. Um, extended Microsoft Basic, a professional quality keyboard, which feels really nice to type on, so I hear. The free basic training manual, which is another specific reason I got this that I'll explain later. Uh, nine color display. Ninth color being black or white, I guess. I don't know. Uh, five different resolutions. Is that what that says? Yeah. Five different resolutions up to 256 by 192. Sound and music capability. Oh my god. <laughs> uses a home VHF TV set so you, so you don't necessarily have to buy an expensive monitor. However, the Tano Dragon does have a monitor output, unlike the uh, the Tandy TRS-80 Color Computers uh, 1 and 2, which is what this essentially is. Uh, it also uses a standard cassette recorder, so if you have a shoebox cassette recorder lying around, that's what you, could, that's what you use for this thing. Alright, I think it's time to unbox this thing, so let's do this. Move the screen so I can see what I'm doing. All right. Where do I open this from the sides? I guess. Yeah. Oh. Paper still feels great. All right. So you pull it outside here. Need to make sure not to damage the box too much, just because it's new old stock and I. Not had very much that's new old stock. The only other new old stock item I ever got was a Bang & Olsen record player. So this is the second new old stock item I've ever had. That's been of any real significance. Alright. It was in the styrofoam container to keep it safe. Ah yes, here we are. 
papers got a little beat up. This is the warranty statement. Tano Microcomputer Products Corporation warrants the original consumer slash purchaser that the product is free from any defects in materials or workmanship for a period of 90 days from the date of purchase. Well, it's been a lot more than 90 days. <laughs> I'd say it's been close to 20 years. 30 years even. Uh, no, it's, yeah, it's been like 30 years. <laughs> I like this part of it. <laughs> To be completed by the dealer. That's when a dealer would sell you these computers. That's crazy. Well, let's see what else we got in here. Okay, so obviously, what do we get with it? This is the computer. What else did we get? Yes, there's like, I don't know what this is. There's like, there's like melted crap all over this cable. Maybe that's heat damage. I have no idea. Huh. But, anyway, it's an RF cable that likely goes with this RF switch box. It comes with one of these, which could really be used with anything. You could use this with a video game system, even. So, you know, there you have it. Even though this is new old stock, I would still open this up and shoot some contact cleaner in there just to make sure it'll work. I'm not going to be using it though. I have something better than that. So I'll put that back in its original bag right there. Here's the cassette cable, which could do some cleaning, it looks like. Yeah, it's got the same cable crap all over it. But all the wires look good, so. Sweet. And of course it comes with some software. There you have it. Software right there. So we'll have to try that out soon. What's in this box? Probably the power supply. Grounded power cable. Get a grounded power cable. It's a big old transformer here. Power switches on the transformer. So power switch does not have much resistance at all. You can just like tap it. <laughs> uh, and the cable that plugs into the computer looks like a DB9 serial connector, which is which is usually what you'd see controllers use so odd anyway I'll take the computer itself out of it so well, that's very light sweet oh there's more under here the Tano Master Pack cassette it has CC writer, CC calc, CC mailer, CC merger and CC file so We'll have to take a look at uh, all these, uh, all the software that comes with it. Legend of the Tower. <laughs> yeah, we'll take a look at it from my point of view. Alright, and of course, right at the bottom are the manuals. And you get the beginning manual here, which is just the simple owner's manual. You know, it has It'll give you diagrams of all the ports and stuff on the computer itself and whatnot. What else? The Dragon Cassette Manual. So I assume this is part of the. Uh, this is just the manual for the uh, for the software you get with the computer. Looks like this is the packaging inspection slip. It's kind of cool. And the. Thing that I wanted the most, the basic manual. I'm what I bought this computer for is to learn basic. That's what I bought it for, that's what I intend to do with it. I had a really horrible experience uh, learning learning basic or learning basic, learning Python. 
at, uh, as a part of an IT program in, at my old college I went to. So, and I, I've sort of just been, not really afraid, but I've just been avoiding programming in general since then. And I think it's time that I step it up since that's the way that the industry is going. It's programmers, software engineers. So, why not get a computer that I can learn basic on? This is the perfect one. And the reason, that, and the reason uh, for that is that the computer is so dead simple. Uh, it's based, what the Tano Dragon is, essentially, is the American version of the Dragon 64 from the UK. And those are essentially Tandy TRS-80 color computers, or Cocos, uh, versions 1 and 2 in a new package. Uh, so, it's, it's, great, it's a great uh, tool to learn basic on, because these things can't do much. So, you'll be able to figure, at least I'll be able to, uh, sort of master the language on a computer that doesn't do much, and then I can work my way up to something like Visual Basic, C++, you know, something like that. So, I figure learning on an extremely simple old machine will be good for me, because my brain does not do linear thought processing very well, and it does not do, uh, you know, it, generally I have issues with learning math and programming languages and things like that. So I think starting with something simple is just a good idea. So that's what I did here. All right, let's take a look at the computer itself. Pull out its plastic. All right, here we are. Now how good is this keyboard? I've heard it feels nice. Very nice feeling keyboard actually. The switches, they, there's very little travel on the switches, on the keyboard switches. Uh, very linear all the way down, like the slightest bit of resistance. It feels good. I like that. I like that very much. So, let's take a closer look at this particular computer. All right, here we have it. Here's a close look at the keyboard here. It's just a pretty standard layout. Although it's, these are a little odd. There's the brake key right there. I love this keyboard, man. It feels great. So, what does this computer have for ports? There's your RF port right there. Reset button. Left joystick tape, right joystick, and SIO, I forget what that is. Then there's a printer port, which is actually a, a, a Centronix uh, port right there. Just an odd connector there. There's your power supply input, which is the uh, weird uh, uh, DB9 sort of connector. Uh, the channel selector between channel 3 and 4 has a really nice feeling switch. That's heavy duty right there. Uh, monitor output, which you can use for uh, composite. Now, what does it say on the bottom? Here's your FCCID. New Orleans, Louisiana. Made in USA. So, this is one of the uh, later models just like the one that VWest Life got. Still has all the warranty screws covered over, which I will probably be violating that warranty fairly shortly to show you guys the inside. So, there you have it. Label up here is just a sticker, so nothing fancy. Uh, has a nice big space up here, so you can put something like a flat screen monitor on top of there. Ventilation here. And there you have it. There's not much to these old machines. Uh, so along with that, I got all the manuals, some documentation, RF cable, tape cable, RF box, some software, and the power supply. So definitely a good deal. 
All right, since uh, since this computer's brand new and all, I should just open it up, shouldn't I? <laughs> I'm sure you guys want to see what's inside one of these, so I'll get my screwdriver and we'll take a look. There's the hole. Where's the hole? There it is. <gasps> I have violated something horrible. Like the warranty that was out of date, you know, 30 years ago. <laughs> See if I can get the sticker off without leaving a residue. Oh, left a residue. All right. Here we have the tan dry. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. <sighs> Stupid LCD screen. Can't see what I'm doing. Stupid LCD screen. One thing I forgot to mention is the, uh, the cartridge port. Uh, you can put cartridges in there with programs. You can put other accessories in there to let you put four cartridges in there. And you can also use that to attach uh, hard drives, I believe. I think I saw that somewhere. So all the screws are out. And here we are. It looks brand new in there. Holy crap. Look at that. It looks brandy new. Absolutely pristine. This is what the inside of a 1980s computer that can't do a whole lot looks like. Look at all that. Let me uh, turn it around here so we can take a look. Look at that. It's beautiful. There's the Motorola CPU right there, the 6809 EP. Not sure what that is. IC18, IC17, I don't know what those are either. wonder if that's RAM or something or... Ah, hell, I don't know. Looks like here we have a... Uh, either a voltage regulator or a transistor or something. Well, a big old heat sink along with these little guys here. And some capacitors, some big old ones, those are filters. These are Cornell Dubler capacitors, so these are good quality. Cornell Dubler's uh, US made, I think. Bunch of diodes, another capacitor. A couple electrolytics and everything. Looks like a uh, variable resistor there, but yeah. This is what computers used to be. They used to be things you could actually work on as a kit. Which to me is just such a cool idea. So, Yep, that's what the inside of a Tano Dragon looks like. And there is the keyboard connector right there. There you have it. The keyboard's very well built as well. Yes, that's the inside of a Tano Dragon. Now, one thing you'll need to run the software on this computer is a shoebox cassette recorder, preferably with a remote jack. Right there. And one of these will allow this tape of software to run. So, that's the first thing you need. What the hell? <laughs> I don't know what that was. Something went bong inside the machine there. It's haunted. Anyway. You'll need a shoebox cassette recorder, preferably with a remote jack. And that's just one of many accessories that you might want to get for, for one of these. I decided to get quite a few accessories with this thing. I got some uh, Tandy Color Computer Joysticks, since that's where it's supposed to work. These you saw in a previous video where the guy packed them extremely badly in that envelope. <laughs> I also got a Tandy Deluxe joystick and uh, I know V Westlife was uh, told me to make sure that I got one of these with the 5 pin DIN instead of that the ones that he has there for the uh, Tandy 1000 and I made sure I did. These, the reason I got this particular controller really 
The reason I got this particular controller is because it is a centering controller, which is good for things like uh, Pac-Man and you know games where you just do that. I'm sure it'll feel pretty good. It's a nice joystick. However, the cable does have some uh, has some rust on it that I should probably uh, clean off. It is the right cable though. Made sure of that. So that's another. That's some other accessories you might want to get. Some joysticks. One thing you might also want to get is an Atari monochrome cable. Now I learned this from V West Life's video, where uh, you can use an Atari monochrome cable to uh, hook the Tano Dragon up to your uh, TV using composite instead of using RF with one of these, which I found to be, which I find to be pretty handy. So. Yeah, one of these is also pretty ideal to have as well. Alright, so that's all the stuff I got in preparation. And we'll come back with another video when we actually hook it up and run the machine. Hope you guys enjoy the unboxing and an inside look. And have a good one, everybody.